Um, for those that are online and would like to ask questions, we've just come to the end of the discussions of the team. If you have any questions, um, please put it on the comment section that we put it. I just have some few questions um, that I would like to um, put to the panelists for any of them. The first question is coming from Babu Karba. I think this would have to, I don't know which of, which, who among you will be able to handle it. Gambia has uh, ratified the Malabo Convention. If not, are there plans to do so? Is there any one of you that would like to respond? Biran? Hello, Biran. Um, sorry, that question, I think probably Isatu is in a better position to, to know. Isatu, can... are you with us? Do you? Yeah, 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 I am with you. I just unmuted yeah, my, this, my Okay. Um, there's yeah, a, what is the question again? Uh, Gambia. Has, Gambia has ratified the Malabo Convention. If yes. not, are there any plans to, to do so? Yes, yes, we definitely have. Okay. We Can you elaborate on that, please? Um, actually, um, we, um, how do they call it? Not actually ratifying it, but like sort of supporting it in the process of before you ratify it, um, you have to sign. I think that's what we did. And then in the process of ratifying it, from that process of signing it, like agreeing to it, then we will ratify it. Um, I think that will be done later but we have already signed it. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation, yes. Aisha. Too. Yes. Um, yeah. Just another quick question, then this will be go back to um, Aisha. Too. Um, how does one handle data breaches when standardization and managing data? Hello, Isadu. Are you with us? Hello. Okay, let, let me go back to to to. to. Isadu, are you with us? Okay, let me let me ask this question to Jimmy. Jimmy, what what quality yes, hello. controls are you? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I can hear okay. you now. I just have this quick question. How does one handle data breaches when standardizing and managing data? Okay. Um. Actually, currently there is no common approach, um, sort of, in handling data bridges. However, um, both our data policy and privacy uh, will capture some of it. For example, if it is captured in the data protection policy and strategy, um, for instance, um, data security and um, breach notification, the controller and where applicable, the processor, so I'll take appropriate security measures against risks such as accidental or unauthorized access to destruction, laws, use, modification, or disclosure of personal data. And the uh, controller shall notify without delay at the least competent supervisory authority of those data breaches, which may seriously interfere with rights and fundamental freedoms of data subjects. So in addition, also, we have um, the Gambia Cybersecurity Emergency Response Team, which is called the GAMSAT. It is housed at um, Pura. Do conduct cybersecurity and uh, analysis and do sometimes report um, known data breaches to the, to the ministry and also um, to entities or individuals that are affected. So in addition, um, some people do report some data breaches and also cyber security incidents to the Gambia Police Hello. Force Security. Hello, I said, sorry for interrupting. Yes. Can, can, can you be on video, please? Can you enable your video? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, um, like I was saying, the in addition to the Gambia Cyber Security Emergency Response Team, um, um, we they do conduct cyber security analysis and sometimes um, report non-data breaches to the ministry and also to entities or individuals 
that are affected. And in addition, some people do report some data breaches and to, um, cyber security incidents to the Gambia Police Force Cyber Security Unit. So the data forensics units as well, um, if that happens. So the plan is um, once an independent authority for data protection is established as stipulated in the data protection and privacy policy and strategy, it will be coordinating data breaches in the country moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aisato. Um, yeah. We have a, a brand, we have a question on you on the screen, which is the 175 uh, Forex Bureau interesting brand. Why, why the bottlenecks? Brand, can you be on video when you're responding to this question, please? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. I can't be at the moment, but I don't understand the question. Why the bottlenecks as in, can they clarify the question? Bottlenecks in what exactly? I spoke on a lot of different things. All right, okay. Um, if the listener is online still, please, can you clarify further the question that you are trying to say? In the meantime, um, if you don't have any further questions, I think uh, we've almost gone beyond time. Um, for now, I think, uh, okay, we just, there's a, there's a question that just popped up. Do you think the central bank has the capacity to develop the necessary architect for the payment system, Biran? The central bank, even if they don't, they have partners that are ready to support them. The UNCDF has been supporting them for the past three years. And one of the things, one of their mandates is to support in terms of digitalizing payment systems. So Can you be on video, please? I'm sorry, sorry I cannot. At the moment. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I, I'm not in a space where the video. Okay, is please go ahead. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, I think I'm done. I've, I've wrapped up. So the central bank, even if they don't have internally the capacity, they have support from donor funded projects. They have support from the UNCDF and other partners that are ready to help them develop this framework for digital payments. Over. All right. Just another question that just pumped up on the screen. As a devil advocate, is digital transformation not cause for further unemployment? What's your take on that, Biran? We are not there yet in Gambia to actually be replaced by robots. That's my personal take, though, speaking as Biran, not as president of ITAS. <laughs> I, I thank you, also, Biran. Thank you, Biran. Maybe I can. Yes. Also, Do we have uh, any uh, other panelists that would like to touch on that point? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I, I can. Jimmy, are you there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. So, um, uh, there, there's there's potential, technically speaking, for um, you know. Uh, at least reassignment of existing staff, as you know, as you as you embrace digital transformation, but it's also an opportunity for some, for these staff to be you know reassigned to tap to to positions that take better usage of their skills. They could be cross trained in in tasks that have better value to the business. Like, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. I don't believe um, there's very much. Um, business value in having someone who's that who's, who's whose whole role involves moving paper from one place to another right if if if, the, if that role is of, of alleviated by by virtue of uh, the business embracing uh digital transformation and automation then that person can be constrained to be some to do something more useful to the business yeah like even something as basic as data entry that that, that takes very little training and somebody can can be you know question to that. So I don't think like like Brian said, I don't think we we are anywhere near the 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 the, um, the position where people are going to start losing their jobs as, as a result of adopting digital transformation. In fact, I I, I believe you know it makes the Gambia um, agencies and businesses more attractive to train Gambians to you know seek jobs there. Because that you know they'll actually be using the knowledge that they've um, that they've gained via education in a, an actual useful form, rather than simply moving paper from one place to another. Thank you, thank you, Jimmy, for that brilliant explanation. Um, response to that question. Um, um, this question we have one one more one more question. Um, it goes to Isadu. How can you help to ensure that the Department of Nursing of the Gambia develop a similar and nursing assessment data as you have experienced from your previous university. Would you like to take on that? 
<laughs> oh my god, this is a very, yeah. <laughs> it's a very interesting question. Um like I said, um with I think I had this discussion with Salo some time ago. Um when I was um discussing when I came first with the with the I came with the project actually and I went to the hospital and I presented the project there, but unfortunately um due to our internet and the poor infrastructure at the hospital i was just um kind of discouraged that it could not be implemented in the in the hospital so by then very young i got angry i just went back home with my project i gave it to my mother i don't know where it is right now but yeah of course if you need my support um um the student who asked the question you can reach out to me and we see what we can do working together with um, software developers. I think we can, I can help you guide to how to do the process and uh, working with an IT. I don't know how that is gonna go, but if you need my support, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I said it. Thank you very much. I think uh, mm -hmm. with that, we almost come into the end of the session. But there's one one particular question that that I just noticed uh, from the comments, and this is coming from Abdullah Indong. Is the central government listening to what you guys are saying? This is a very relevant to national development. I hope, I hope among the um, the viewers online, we've invited government officials, and there would be recording available online where government officials or government itself can make references to such discussions online and. Um, to talk some of the main issues highlighted by the panelists tonight um, to look at issues and ways of addressing some of those challenges that have been discussed today. Um, just to say we, we are coming just to the end, I think we have gone beyond time. So at this point in time, um, let me just take one more question um, from and then end it there. Um, the question is, um, Just uh, government data center requires infrastructure to serve it, it to both policymakers and the government in general. Is there any steps that are being done by government to provide? I think this goes to Abdul Karim. Is government doing anything with regards to providing the infrastructure that is needed for um, system integration? Well, I know, good question. I know one thing that is, for example, there is a government data center that has been initiated. Um, I also understand that there are um, policies and frameworks that are being initiated to support um, integration. But I'm not sure if much has been done in that area. Yet. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Karim. With that, we will now um almost come to the end of the discussion but before we close we have um we need to get the closing remarks from the president of uh gc gcprs which is uh who is the um with us here um, if you are with us online please can you um start the closing remarks for us to end um this session Modo tourism Modo, are you are you with us for the closing remarks? Hello, Modu. Modu Ture, are you there? Okay, in the absence. Hello. Hello. Jibo, this is Kausu. I don't think uh, Mr. Ture is on. Um, are you going to do the closing remarks, Kausu? Or if there is no closing more than, remarks, I just want to happy to do that. All right, can you please go ahead and do the closing remarks so that we can end the session? We've gone beyond time. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Uh, and, uh, thank you for a wonderful job that you did today, helping us to coordinate this very important seminar. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank all the panelists. Um, your experience, your skill sets, your knowledge it is, is phenomenal. And, and uh, this contribution actually will go a long way um, in helping our country. Um, I, I'm hopeful that um, all the stakeholders are represented on this seminar. 
and then they are listening keenly to um, what was presented today. Uh, as a country, we can move forward uh, with how uh, putting the importance of technology in every sphere of society. Uh, and I really think that this seminar and every other discussion that's actually going on will take our country to the next level in terms of uh, be technology friendly in every aspect of society. Um, once again, I want to thank all the audience. Uh, thank you for your contributions. I was actually taking time to read your comments, your questions. We truly appreciate it. And I also want to assure you all that uh, GCRPS is here to stay. We are a partner in development and then we want to thank you all. And we look forward to a series of this coming on so that we can have this national dialogue and uh, talk through issues that our country is facing and way forward, making sure that we always provide a way forward. Uh, from the panelists, I had a lot of things around things that have been discussed, things that have been put in paper, but it looks like we, ha we are missing the implementation, the implementation phases of all these things. So as, as an institution, one of the things that we will be moving forward is making sure that we're able to provide these best practices, this knowledge to all the stakeholders and be able to help in the process of making sure that we move our country forward. And once again, I want to thank you all. I know it's a Saturday, we have time for family and everything else that was planned, but you all put that aside to join us uh, to be able to hear from these impeccable Gambians with a whole lot of knowledge and skill set to share on this seminar. Once again, Jimmy, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, and the wonderful job that you did to moderate this um, semi um, or seminar. I appreciate you all. You all have a great Saturday. Thank you. And then we we'll see you soon.